Hi guys, I'm Sansar. So, today I'm here with a new tutorial exclusively for YouTube people. So, today I'm going to teach you the basics of FumeFX. If you guys are wanting to learn VFX, then FumeFX is one of the best tools to create some explosions and fire and flames effects. So, if you are not familiar with FumeFX, then I think you should be with it. So today I'll be going through the basics of using FumeFX for the first time. So if you guys have not installed it, uh, then I think you should go ahead and grab a copy of FumeFX and then just install it. So once you have installed it, you can uh, see FumeFX uh, one over the geometry. There you can down there you have FumeFX. Another you can go to helpers, there is a film effects. Um I don't know exactly other places. I think there's just two. Okay, that's two. We need that too. Okay. The first step uh of using film effects uh into the geometry tab, go to film effects and um, by the way I'm using three as three D S Max two thousand ten version and film effects two point zero. So um, I think some older versions are also quite the same, so there won't be any problem following along. So once you have gone to Film Effects, here is a Film Effects. Click that, and then you can drag and drop a box. So this is the working space for Film Effects. Okay, one more time. Let me delete it. Just select this, and then just drag it. You can just press the Control button to make it proportional equal uh, and then drag it up so this is a working area for film effects all the simulations of film effects are done inside this area okay so here you see a small cube uh, that's actually called a voxel so voxel is related to kind of a resolution for any images uh, but this is on a 3d space so mm, let me select this uh, okay I'll go over that a little later on so 3d uh, sorry film effect just calculates every data just inside this container so all the data are will only work inside this container if you uh, any s uh, simulation goes out outside of the container then that's just omitted that's not calculated so we'll get that in a moment uh, so once we have created our container uh, the next step is to create our source so for that let us go to helpers film effects then we have got six different types of sources um, in older versions I think there are only four simple source object source particle source and gravity vector so here we have six source but most of the time we'll be using simple source and particle source and the object source so in this example uh, sorry in this tutorial I'll be going over simple source and in the next part next week I'll be going through object source and particle source so guys don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be notified when another part of this tutorial is published so uh, so we'll go through simple source let me create a simple source okay so this is what our from where our fire is going to ignite our fire is, fire is going to burn so let us just um, press W to move to then uh, zero in X and Y direction and then just move it up so don't forget to keep it inside the container so if it is outside then it is not calculated by film effects so we need it to be inside so just keep it a little above from the container okay uh, one more thing I'd like to tell you that I'm not going to create any specific effect in this tutorial using film effects rather I will be explaining some of the basics tools that you will need to know using film effects so that you can create your own effects uh, utilizing those settings so once we have added our source as well so let us go to modify panel select our container then we have got some bunch of settings right here 
so I've got two tab open for now so uh, um, one more tips for you guys so uh, whenever you are using FilmFX I don't recommend using settings from around here so it's better for you guys to go to open FilmFX UI so it will open a new floater which contains uh, most of the settings that is contained here so using these settings uh, like spacing so using it from here then it is better to use it from here so once we have opened our floater UI we are rolling to create our fire okay now we have got here general tab simulation tab rendering tab double TP tab it's just in the new version uh, and elimination tab object source tab so we'll be spending most of our time in simulation tab and rendering tab and some of our time in elimination object source so but I think I have never used this section so uh, I don't have any knowledge about this so and it's um, just believe me guys that it's not too important so and here we have got file preferences simulation mode um, file load preset just if you have created any presets and you like that so you can just save them and preferences you have you can set your output path preset paths crash disks uh, and even you can create snaps at every end 20 frame or whatever you like if you think that the machine will crash or something so you can keep that for now let me leave it like that okay now down here we have got some icons right here so it might be a little different in older versions or even newer versions uh, so but just find out that there is a start default simulation continue simulation back burner mode that's not uh, needed much and open preview window so let me show you what it does first of all let me go to object source okay let me revise it one more time once we have created our container we created a simple source um, one more time just remember that we have got some other sources as well but I'll be explaining them in another part of tutorial so again select the container go to modify okay that's there is no problem just ignore that okay then when after we open our floater so go to object source and then pick object then add our simple source so what does this does is it prepares our simple source to start burning fire so after adding that the container adds simple source and it creates a simple fire so once we open a preview window this window for preview so now we don't have any animations so once we click the start default simulation button now we have got that fire and smoke the default film effects create this kind of fire and smoke. Okay, let me do complete simulation. Okay, I've got up to 100 frames, so it simulated up to 100. So, defaultly, film effects create this kind of fire since our simple source is round, it is creating a round fire with some smokes. So, it does not look any good, but after using some settings, you can get it whatever you like and one more thing let me tell you guys that FilmFX is not a software sorry not a tool just to create smoke and fire simulations only we have a lot more and we can do a lot more from this small tool let's not say small it's really a vast and deep tool so not only fire and smoke remember one more time not explosions or fires only we can do a lot more from film effects so the next thing um, you can also just render out this scene and see how it looks so we have got some um, bad looking smokes and fires if you can see that this top part is kind of cut like the since our container is small that we don't have enough space okay now next thing let's me go to journal tab and explain something about it so spacing is what is kind of a resolution 
if we change our uh, spacing, you can see that the size is changing. Okay, if we decrease that, our size increases, and same also it increases up to 195 MB. This refers to the amount of RAM, but uh, I recommend you guys don't go too much high because it requires a lot of processing power. And if you are doing just test renders, just uh, don't go too much about 1890, that will be fine. Um, but if you go too high, it might use 100 GB plus, so that's too much. And if you guys have like 4 GB of RAM or 8 gigabits of RAM, don't try to cross SIM up to 1000 MB. So that will be really slow just when you are completely done with your effect and you are going to render it for final preview then only go to about 300 and even for production you can go to about size of 400 all around 400 and seem up to that but it requires a really lot power I can show you guys if you see even a single frame requires a lot of time so previous time we had all frames done about in just 10 to 20 seconds but now just a single frame it took about 13 seconds so it takes a lot of time so be careful with that guys uh, let me just cancel that so be careful so for preview I'll just go to about 60 to 70 we don't need too much for now okay that's good and with a length, with length height they are of our container we can change the size from here never scale our container you can never do that because that's gonna m miscalculate the data so even though if you scale the values here won't change so the film effects will calculate wrong data so always uh, change the width length or height from here okay okay once that is done uh, let me just use small size don't let me not use too big okay then we have got output you can set start range and end frame uh, since I have from 0 to 100 frames so it is by default it uh, simulates all the frames if you want to just simulate up to 50 frames you can put the end frame to 50 okay but for now let me leave that and exporting channels you can uh, export fuel or smoke only or you can temperature extract it also uh, for the basic part I don't think they are needed so an output path you can set output path so every simulation you do that are recorded in that path and if you need that data later on then it might be useful even the playback that uh, playback are from 0 to 100 you can also just sort of need up to 50 60 if you need you can do that according to your need so once that much uh, we don't have much in general tab so next we'll move to simulation tab okay this is where we spend lots of our time experimenting with different values you, have, you can see lots of values we have got here but believe me most of the settings you want to use in most of the cases so I'll just go through those which are more uh, mostly used doing some projects okay so we have got uh, maximum iteration so solver we have got only one uh, I think in newer version of film FX3 there will be some more options here so for now that's and quality that does determine the quality so defaultly it is fine and I think that's enough maximum iteration 200 by default that's too crazy if we are doing a uh, bigger simulations you can maybe you can boost it up higher as well but for our cases or uh, let's say we're not dealing with any specific effects so when you are dealing with some simple explosions or simple flames 50 to 70 that's enough simulation steps um, okay time scale it determines how fast the fire will ignite or fire will move up so you can also admit all these settings uh, time scale you can animate like when you are creating explosions uh, you can animate time scales so if you go ahead and watch in some of the explosions and you can see that explosions happen first at 
great speed and then it, mm, the smoke slows down slowly moving upwards so you can just animate this time scale if you increase that it will be increased and then decrease same uh, gravity I think I don't need to explain that it pulls the fire down buoyancy so is also one of the important um, thing we need to know so buoyancy what, uh, what does it does is it helps to the fire to rise up so let me show you one uh, let me do a quick simulation one more time I think I'll decrease the spacing Oops, sorry up to this one or maybe more okay this much so that the simulation will be quick so let me pause it for a while okay uh, let me just stop it right here so if you see uh, and just um, look at how as our fire is going up now uh, okay go to simulation tab and buoyancy I'll decrease it down to 0 0.2 and let me do one more simulation with l let me do a little less uh, because we don't need to have good quality now so let me just do a simulation and if you see that our fire does not rise up at all so the fire just dies at down the smoke is moving upward but our fire it does not rise up one more time let me again go to buoyancy to one and then check to see the difference our fire now lasts longer and it is moving little upward so you can see that our fire is still working here it's still burning but when we just decreased our buoyancy to 0 0.2 there was the fire was not rising up so if you increase this up to 2 let's say and then now you can see the difference now our fire is um, because of the quality it's not looking good but you can really see that the fire is rising up okay let me just increase the quality a little bit and then show you guys so you can really see the difference so increasing the buoyancy increases how up your fire will be rising so it determines the rising of your fire so whenever you are doing some kind of explosions uh, maybe they don't fire don't rise too much it's gonna rise up to some certain areas and then smoke only a smoke will fly up when you are creating some flames then according to your need you can set up buoyancy so you can see that our fire is lasting a little longer when we have the buoyancy too okay let me get that back to one and then x turbulence uh, it just uh, works like a wind and just uh, disperse the fire here and there just keep some turbulence or noisy uh, let me do it to one and then do one simulation more I think at one we don't have too much difference but you can see that our fire have some turbulence in it now and smokes they have got some turbulence as well okay stop it so let me stick with this guys don't get confused with this spacing so if you have really a fast machine then just keep this size to um, about 100 all for test or 90 and if you have a slow one then just go around 50 60 uh, just according to your need if you need uh, some high quality results then if you are rendering it for production you want to increase it to about 400 to 500 or maybe even higher if you have a high m power machine or you can just decrease it and just set it uh, on a certain value for test renders on just um, no need to change it time and again just I'm just doing it to show you guys uh, nice one but one thing remember that uh, higher the quality the um, lower the spacing higher the quality and the higher the quality the output result will be better and um, the output really differs if using in low quality and high quality so 
once you are done with your effects or once you are going to try uh, how does your effect look about 150 or 200 before going for production and after that you are satisfied you can go to about 400 500 around that so for about 400 and 500 you need about 10 gigabits of RAM so that's too much okay so for now just this much will do okay back to simulation tab uh, the turbulence gives some turbulence and we have got some turbulence noise so scale it frames and details so how much detail you want a little more you can increase and scale so they are somewhat interrelated so you can just adjust these settings and get some nice turbulence right there okay and remember guys whenever you play with these settings if you want to check that you cannot just refresh it here uh, there's no way that you have to re-simulate it so but in the rendering tab these colors that they just get updated you don't need to again re-simulate it but on the simulation tab you gonna re-simulate every time you change setting every time you need to look how your work is going so blocking size uh, at first w w when our size container size was smaller the f smoke just got omitted from the top part so if you set the blocking size like up for up G then the smoke bounces back from that side so it doesn't go out but it just stays inside bouncing uh, to the sides so let me go to fuel now so fuel is what from what our fire is burning so uh, the important one on the fuel is a burn rate so that's how much fire it's going to burn no, sorry how much fuel is going to burn uh, how much fuel is going to burn so if you have a lower burn rate then the fuel is going to burn for a longer time and if you have burn rate higher about 50 or 60 then your fire is going to die out soon since it burns really fast the fuel burns really fast so if you want your fire to linger for a longer period of time then you want to keep it a little smaller so burn rate variation the different uh, um, fire gonna burn some uh, some die quickly and some die uh, some linger for a longer period of time heat production it's somewhat like burn rate but it'll just create more heat and expansion so it's useful when you are creating some explosions um, and, and expansions and burn rate are interrelated or let's say they have some relation with each other lower the burn rate higher the expansion higher the burn rate lower the expansion that what does that means is if you have lower burn rate and you want your explosion to explode up then you want to increase the expansion if you have higher burn rate then the same explosion amount and higher burn rate you want to decrease decrease the expansion if you confuse guys I'll show you with some example okay burn rate 10 and the expansion to about 5 let me do a simulation you see that our fire is explosive now it is just blasting off and you can see that it's blasting at very hour okay let me stop it and then just uh, change the expansion to 2 and then I can do it one more time so now it is less explosive and since we added some turbulence it has got some turbulence as well okay so it is less explosive than before let me stop it now and then increase our burn rate 50 and we have got just two two expansion let me increase that now we have got a massive explosion so the same expansion rate expansion just two and higher burn rate that gives more explosive less burn rate higher expansion also give sorry um, when we have higher burn rate uh, try to lower down the expansion and then when burn rate is low you need to increase up the expansion 
so don't get confused guys just go on creating then you will just learn on yourself so there's nothing to worry about so here is the next option fire create smokes that really makes sense that fire is going to create smoke for us once we check up that then our f let me do a simulation then our fire creates the smoke now the smoke's not going to ignite itself and that is going to ignite from our fire okay just stop and then burn rate to about uh, let me go to 40 or maybe just 15 and then expansion up to 2 only and then smoke density let me put that 1 and then simulate it now once we have checked the fire create smokes then the smokes are coming out from the fire okay that's what it looks now okay it's explosive okay now stop it then temperature based you can also um, use the fuel on temperature based but that's um, a little too okay, you can do that but that's mostly not useful so the smoke and temperature will go that in layer courses next part okay extra detail we have got there but I don't have got spaces so oh okay since I don't have but um, that's a little advanced so I'm not going to explain that in this part so there's some fuel map fluid mapping and so on so just uh, forget for that okay so we have got 25 minutes far I think we just completed a general tab I think we have got understood and then also a simulation tab we almost completed most of the important parts if you got a, if you have got any confusion then you can just hit back on the comments I'll try to explain it on my next part and later on or I'll try to um, get back to you uh, um, get back to you through emails or back in comments um, and we have got now rendering and illumination and object source tab this three tab will be explaining on next part so for now just goodbye uh, next part will be online next week so don't forget to subscribe to get notified when the video is online so thank you guys for watching it have a good day